Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Network 27. I'm Alderman Walter Burnett. First of all, I want to say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. Um, also, I want to thank everyone who helped me to put this show together. And also, um, I hope that you all, if you haven't got them yet, uh, when you get them, I hope that you enjoy the calendar that we sent out. Uh, that's our gift to you. Uh, also, uh, seniors in the ward, you know, to get in contact with your uh, precinct captain because you know what we do for you every Christmas. Uh, and those things would be happening on the uh, 14th and the 15th of December. Um, also, I want to thank everyone who uh, signed my petitions for my reelection. Thank you all very much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to serve you and hope you give me that opportunity again in February. Uh, but today, ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about uh, a great organization uh, that started uh, in the 27th Ward uh, on the near north side uh, several years ago. Uh, and today we have three guests with us. We have uh, Charlie Robinson Brandon. Uh, Charlie is the founder and the director and the board member of Art on Cedric. All right, and we also have the chairman of the board, Mr. Jeff Dabo, Dago, Dagbo, Dagbo. Sorry about that, Dagbo. All right, and and uh, also we have the program director and board member, um, and um, creative director, uh, John Baker. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, so, Charlie, Brandon, Charlie, you know, um, why don't you tell the audience? Um, about yourself and then how did you find or come up with this idea about the art on Cedric Street? Okay, uh, my name is Charlie Branda and I live here in uh, the near north Old Town neighborhood and I, um, I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, came here to go to college, I attended Wheaton College. So this co-air don't bother you at all. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> this is cake. <laughs> um, uh, moved here to go to college, went to Wheaton College, studied political science. That's a Christian college. Right? It is a Christian college, yes. And then I got a job in commercial banking and worked for a predecessor bank of J.P. Morgan Chase for about a little over 15 years and um, took some time off to, um, to raise my children. And um, uh, also while I was working at the bank, I went back to grad school. So I went to the University of Chicago Booth School of Business and I have an MBA from, um, from there in marketing, finance, and organizational behavior. Wow, so you're pretty smart. So, mm -hmm. so after, you <laughs> after you quit working for J.P. Morgan Chase, mm -hmm. you went home to raise your children. Uh, how old are your children? They are both in high school, so our oldest is 18. Mm -hmm. He's a senior at Walter Payton College Prep, and my daughter is 15. She's a sophomore at Jones College Prep. Okay, fantastic. So you, so you went home to take care of your kids, raise your kids, got a little bored and went back to school to get your master's degree? Oh, no, no, I got um, my master's degree while I was in school. I mean, while I was working still. Oh, so you got it while you were working? Yes, okay, I was, so when you know, you, I had the so marathon when you, when you, all day, all night working and go back to the office after class until two in the morning and dig it. things like so, that. So then when you, uh, so when you stopped working, you stopped everything to raise your kids? I was mostly, I started, I was doing a lot of volunteer work. Mm -hmm. So I had served on a lot, I spent some of my career in banking, banking nonprofit organizations, so I got to know a lot of the uh, people in the nonprofit community here. So I, um, I'd served on the board of Looking Glass Theater, and now they're partnering with us, um, and several other organizations. So I was still doing volunteer work. I got involved in, uh, well, so I'm active, I was active in my church, at LaSalle Street Church, and also- Great, great um, church, LaSalle Street Church. Got involved in the North Unity program. Um, I, I did some work with another church that was in the neighborhood at the time called, um, uh, now I'm forgetting, um, Urban Village. Um, so we had a, a, a board member from Urban Village Church on our board as well. So, um, um, you know, just getting involved wherever I could. I started going to community meetings where there were things going on or there would be like a, a um, interfaith dialogue or something and I would go to that. So I, was, I served on the local school council of Franklin Fine Arts Center for um, eight years and I chaired that for uh, several years. So I was very involved in the school too. Fantastic. So what made you come up with this idea about 
starting an arts program, uh, and then what made you come across the street, right? Mm -hmm. Come across the street from the um, homes that, you know, that cost a little money to a low income or affordable building like Marshall Field Garden Apartments. Well, I guess there are a few things that happened all at the same time. First of all, I moved to this neighborhood as part of the redevelopment of Cabrini Green. I moved into a mixed income development on Mohawk Street. So right after our 18-year-old um, was born, um, we signed the contract so a couple years before that. And by the time it was done, he was a, a newborn infant. Um, so part of that was a, de a desire to connect with people from diverse backgrounds. And then when our kids got a little older and that condo was a little cramped, we bought a house over here on Evergreen. Um, so you used to stay in the ones on Cleveland? We were on Mohawk. On Mohawk. Yeah, that was like a, um, there are, so where Stacy so and David Reynolds um, live. So that's not, was it the same developer? It was, um, it was uh, the developer. Was it MCL? No, MCL built my house now. Oh. This was um, another developer who I don't think I is I think it was Charles Smith and them. Well, Charles Smith was the architect. Yeah, and Charles Smith lives oh, yeah, in that yeah. development now. So, so actually that, that development, if I'm not mistaken, was built by Union Baptist Church and Charles Smith, if I'm not mistaken. I, there, was, there was a development company, I want to say near north something develop. I mean, the, the development company is no longer in existence, I uh, think. So but he, Jeff Welsh, I know, was one of the um, lead developers. Um, and he had some partners. Yeah, they formed a name. But I yeah, think the, uh, I, the past at Union Baptist Church was involved. I think okay. I may be mistaken. Well, there are five buildings there on Mohawk right, Street. And they mix income. Yeah, and they're all mixed up. And they're not next to each other. We were the first ones to sign so, a contract. So it's, it's uh, market rate affordable and CHA. Right, all mixed together. Yeah. And so I love that. But the condo got a little bit tight. So um, Ben got into Franklin as a, by, by lottery as a kindergartner. And so we started looking at the houses right by Franklin there. And so we bought a house there and loved it. But I started feeling uncomfortable because even though we live in this very diverse neighborhood, I could look out my living room and see this building, Marshfield Garden Apartments. Um, I didn't have a natural way to interact with people here. And I sensed that people were uncomfortable with me. Um, you know, I would walk around and smile at people and try to say hello. Um, I saw everybody over here loving each other and hugging each other and calling each other aunt and knowing each other for several generations. And you know, I didn't grow up here, so I don't really have roots here. And I was like, oh, I want what they have. Because they had like warmth and connection and history and roots. And um, I was sort of a transplant. Um, and um, I've had this longing for a connection, but like everybody felt sort of so far away. It was like, one street, but like another world. And um, and then, you know, there's this sense that maybe, um, you know, like our alley's gated. You know, it's almost like people are afraid of each other. And I know I had um, one neighbor who said she was walking on this side of the street and some, some um, you know, people came up to her and said, hey, what are you doing on our side of the street? Mm -hmm. And someone told me that their kids are afraid to stop in front of my house because like, they're afraid that everybody on our street will call the police on them. And you know, that can be very dangerous for a young African-American um, teenager um, or child. And you know, not on purpose, but it's like there's all th this mistrust and fear that's built up over the centuries. And you know. um, so I was feeling kind of uncomfortable with that. Um, just at the time that I was thinking about going back to work, um, when my kids were a little bit older in grade school, this was 2013, I'd stopped by, you know, I went to business school at the University of Chicago. I stopped by um, the Career Development Center at the Gleacher Center and said, hey, I'm thinking about going back to work. I don't want to go back to banking. I just want to start thinking about possibilities. Give me a book that will inspire me. And so um, Anita Brick there handed me this book uh, by Bill Strickland, who is an artist and a ceramicist, really. Um, called Make the Impossible Possible. And in it, this book, he told his story about how as a teenager, um, where he lived in a tough neighborhood, where the people around his neighborhood who looked like him didn't have a lot of opportunities and didn't think that there were many opportunities other than that for him, him for himself, he wandered into a ceramics class and was kind of mesmerized by the teacher um, at a pottery wheel. And the teacher talked him into joining the class. He ended up being very talented and started showing his work around. He hadn't done well in school before, but all of a sudden um, he started studying. You know, he, th this process of taking a hunk of ugly 
like earth, basically, of, and shaping it into something beautiful. Um, he said felt like a miracle to him. And he said, if I can make like dirt look beautiful, then there are a lot more opportunities for my life than perhaps than I have imagined. And so he got into college on probation. Um, his teacher helped him. And then he, while he was in college, he got a, a church, gave him an old building, and said, um, and $10,000, and said, um, start doing what you do with the other kids in the neighborhood. Um, and that really inspired me. I was reading this book, and I thought, wow, you know, like, what an inspiring story. And then right in front of my house, there was a shooting. And um, I, I just, you know, it happened at dinner time, and my children were younger at the time, and were home, you know, um, and that thing happening, you know, I already felt this distance between myself and my neighbors, but then it's that, that sort of longing for connection when someone's in pain um, made me long for more possibilities. It's like, well, that's what I need. Like, that's what our neighborhood needs. Our neighborhood needs, um, an imagination for something that's possible that we don't have yet. But a sense that it's like, it, I think sometimes people just throw up their hands and say, okay, we, um, it's too hard. We can't fix this. We just have to do what we can. But that sense that um, we can imagine more possibilities. And maybe if we fill up some of these storefronts that are empty with um, children creating things together, and in the process of creating something, you connect with that part of yourself that knows the truth of who you are, and that you have a voice, and that you have um, agency, and that you can make changes, um, both in your own life and in the world around you. And it's like, if you just started multiplying that sense of, um, this is something John Baker talks about a lot, it's like, our, Art is a way that you exercise your agency, and that agency doesn't just stay on the canvas. It empowers you with a sense of, I can shape my world. Um, so that's sort of where the idea came from. I wasn't an artist. I was mad at all the artists of the world. It's like, why don't all the artists like come here? They don't. They see our neighborhood. Like, doesn't anybody care about our neighborhood? Like, people are putting art everywhere else. Like, where, like where we have to fill up these empty storefronts. Why isn't anyone doing it? And then there's this little voice saying to me, well, you're someone, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I mentioned to a couple people, and they didn't, you know, they kind of laughed. And I was like, okay, I'm not, like, ready to talk about it yet. But I couldn't not stop thinking about the idea. Like, it, it's like, okay, this idea overtook me, and for whatever reason, it's um, demanding my attention. And this issue in my neighborhood is demanding my attention. So, um, so I, I just kind of waited till the right opportunity and, um, and kind of went for it. So you go from being a commercial banker, probably making a decent pay, um, you know, raising your kids, having a nice home, living across the street from folks who may be different. Uh, and then you go from doing all of that to just completely 100% being involved in this arts program. So it's like a, a total turnaround in, in career and life. Mm -hmm. So, so you not looking for satisfaction with money. <laughs> no. Or all those things, you're looking for satisfaction in helping people. So, so Charlie, I remember, now we're sitting in the office in the Marshall Field Garden Apartments, but I recall you first had a small spot across the street. Right. Right. So you start at that spot, and when you when you open that up, how did you get that spot, and how did you get folks to believe in in, in your vision? Mm -hmm. Well, so we originally had targeted this spot, but when Related brought th bought this property, they were planning to use it as a construction office, so we wouldn't be able to get in for quite a while, and there was certainly some consideration given to we, we just have to wait but we'd already started doing some community art shows and some activities in the neighborhood and people were waiting like kind of um, anxious to get going and get a spot so mm -hmm. I actually had met with a friend who um, who was my son's piano teacher when he was young when he was five um, uh, who's the executive director of um, Access Contemporary Music and he and I were having coffee and, he, and he's like well let's just look at this spot over here and there was a phone number on the window and we called it and offered them like a really low amount and um, said, can we, you know, we're looking for temporary space until we move in across the street. And, you know, they took our deal even though it was less than they wanted, but it had been sitting so there empty. So where did you get the money from? 
Oh, we raised it. So you raised money? Yeah, you call people you know with money? or Yeah, well, we got a group of people together. So, and I mean, John Baker should tell the story about how he got involved, but I mean, we got, and Jeff too, but, um, you know, we slowly started collecting people who were inspired by the vision. And I don't know, for so some... So what did you tell them your vision was? Well, I mean, the things that I just told you, it's like we need to fill up these empty storefronts with um, art, imagination, and connection. So and people would hear me talking, they're like, you know what, you're going to do this. And like, I didn't even believe that I was going to do it, but people who heard me talk about it believed that it was going to happen, and they started joining in on the effort. Yeah, and it's grown, I mean, tremendously. But also, Charlie, I recall you, um, and, and, I, and one, I want to commend you and, and thank God for you. Um, you know, most folks, they shoot in front of their house, they out of here, right? You did the opposite. They shoot in front of your house, you want to do more to make a difference. Right, you want to engage in the community. You want to help to stop these kind of things from happening and get those young people something positive to do in their lives, which I think is great instead of running from the, running from the challenges. Well, I think one of the important things when there is a problem is to, I think you have to get close enough to understand it before you can come up with a creative um, solution. So I think it's really easy to, from miles and miles away, to think, oh, this is what those people over there with that problem need to do, but, um, or this is what that neighborhood needs to do. But like, I don't, you have to get close enough to see it. Um, so I, my instinct was, um, I don't want to let one bad thing make me, or even a series of bad things, make me afraid to get close enough to see the potential solutions. And you know, I, I know you're blessed to have a good husband, a great husband. Yes, he's awesome. And good kids who get engaged with all of this with you, 100%. I mean, from day one when you were doing this, your team was your kids and your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing them, every, doing, every, doing everything with you all the time, yeah. uh, which is great. But the other thing, one of the things I recall you selling folks on is you were talking about bringing all of the different kids in the neighborhood together. Exactly. Right? Right. You were talking about bringing the low income and affordable African American kids together with the middle class or upper class children from the different schools. So you was talking about bringing kids from Muneer, mm -hmm. kids from Catherine Cook, and kids from Franklin. And Immaculate Conception. And Immaculate Conception. Together in one space and get them to working together and doing art together and getting to know each other. And, you know, and which breaks down so many barriers because the funny thing is when you did that, which I thought was tremendous, that's why I support you 100%. When you did that, the funny thing is parents came, mm -hmm. right? So then you break down the stereotypes with the parents, right? Where they get to see that a building with over a thousand people in it. Over 3,000. Over 3,000 people in it, mm -hmm. right? That everybody's not the same. Right. Right? And most of them are good folks, right? Every once in a while you get a bad apple. And especially the children are so innocent. And when you bring them all together and they come together, it's just such a beautiful thing. So I commend you on bringing folks together and helping to break down these barriers in the community and getting folks across, they live across the street for years and never, never know each other, never talk to each other, you know, never engage with the young people in, 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 the, uh, in the community. I think what you're doing is just so tremendous and, and uh, can be a role model for a lot of other people in our society. So I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. So, so uh, John? Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, I apologize. No, you're okay. Jeff, so you're the chairman of the board. Yes. So Charlie was talking about, you know, we were talking about money a minute ago. You also are in banking also. And, um, and being the chairman of the board, you have one of those daunting tasks of uh, trying to get some money, right? <laughs> <laughs> For the organization. So why don't you, why don't you tell us 
about you and how you got involved. What made you What made you hook up with Charlie with this? Do you live over here? Did you grow up over here? You know. Yes, yeah, so I was I was born in Chicago. Uh, we lived in the uptown area, um, but I actually came. I moved around growing up, East Coast, and then came back here to go to back to school at DePaul University. Um, so as I'm kind of growing up and thinking about what I want to do in life, financial services has always been something of interest to me from a business perspective. Um, but I also knew I wanted to help others. Um, for me, growing up, my mom was probably the single greatest help for me to me and my brothers and everything she did for us. So ha I knowing that having one person to push you and kind of guide you, how much of an impact that would be for an individual, was something that I wanted to give back. Um, and then by meeting Charlie, sitting down with her at a coffee shop, I think we met at Argo Tea about two years ago, um, and just seeing the passion she had for this vision, which wasn't nearly there at the time, but the passion she had for somebody that's not an artist and to kind of bring a community together um, really intrigued me. Growing up, I grew up playing the piano, the violin. Um, I was a writer, so I always had that passion for art. Um, and if I had an art center where everybody can come together and still be themselves unjudged, I would have loved that opportunity. So for me, it was a great chance to work with her, partner with her, and help kind of merge a community together without dividing a community. So you, you use both sides of your brain, huh? I try to. I try to. <laughs> He's a poet. Yeah, you use both sides of your brain. You're in the financial industry and you're an artist. I try to. That's great, yeah. man. Fantastic. So, so you got involved. Yeah. You sat down with Charlie. So, she told you her vision. Yeah, and I said, I said, whatever you need me to do. So I think I just came on board to help. Um, I know we, we went to a couple of fundraising events together to raise some money. Um, and she, whenever she needed me, I would be of assistance. I've also, I also do spoken word poetry, so anytime she needed entertainment or, or just anything, I'm, I'm See, here. I almost want to say, go ahead, let us hit one of your, <laughs> one of your poems, man. <laughs> He's got some good ones. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it, it was a perfect opportunity to merge, you know, business and creativity for me. And then um, she just most recently asked if I can, you know, jump on board as the board chair. And I, I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of further that mission and that kind of help us advance. Fantastic. 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 So uh, we have Mr. Baker. Right. Mr. Baker. So you like the um, creative genius behind all these things? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm, uh, I've taught at Trinity Christian College down in the south side for uh, 37 years and um, Charlie and I uh, went to church together and which we church which the church? South Street LaSalle and Street. we served on the we served on the board together uh, about 20 years ago and LaSalle always has a, a you women's been, retreat. You've been in LaSalle that long? You've been in LaSalle that long? Um, yeah, I think I started when I was in grad school. Okay, great. And uh, LaSalle does a women's retreat every year, and uh, at this women's retreat, uh, this, there was a clay person talking, and uh, Charlie had been reading this book, and uh, my wife came home from the, the retreat, and she said, Charlie's going to start an art center. And <laughs> That was the first time I really talked about my vision, um, was there. And... Um, I thought two things. Uh, I, I had just stepped down as the chair of the board, or chair of the uh, art department at Trinity, partly so that I could do volunteer work, because um, I had been going to LaSalle Street a long time, and uh, there was lots of volunteer opportunities there, but I was so busy at Trinity that, that I didn't take advantage of those, and I really kind of wanted to do that. And um, I found Charlie the next uh, Sunday at church, and I said, I'm in. And, so I, the kind of role that I've played is Charlie's bounced ideas off me about art. Uh, I've helped Charlie to connect to some really major Chicago artists because I've got connections in, uh, in the art community. And that's kind of been my role. Uh, we also, you know, as, we, as the board envisioned things, uh, I, I talked a lot about how if you're being creative, you're not going to be destructive. And, uh, that all kids need those kinds of opportunities. And like you said, uh, they need a chance to be together. Uh, a long time ago, I, when I was a uh, student teaching way, way back, um, I taught in a, a, a school uh, that had kids bust in. And 
what, what happened at that school is the first year um, the kids were kind of at each other and then they started to figure it out and the second year something would happen and the parents would get all upset come into the principal's office and the third year the parents started to figure out that if the kids were getting along maybe they should get along too and so for me um, what I, you know, that's kind of what I saw. I, I, I saw us using art as a catalyst to build community. That's why I love this program. I mean, so yeah. there are several things that Charlie did to try to bring folks together and uh, with the young people. So tell us some of your earlier projects when you first started. Well, we started with a community art show where we, I reached out to the um, schools, the four schools that are within a block here. So there are two private schools and two CPS schools. So there's Muneer, the neighborhood school that primarily serves people who live here. And um, then there, uh, Catherine Cook, Immaculate Conception, Franklin. Um, and I pitched the idea. So my kids were at Franklin at the time. And we had so much rich art kind of connection there within the school that well what if we could expand this out to the whole neighborhood and get students exhibiting their artwork together and creating artwork on a theme so we tr we had our first faces and places art exhibit in 2014. So what did the young people do? Uh, they drew their faces or? Well, so we had them primarily focus on self-portraits. We, we told self the art portrait. teachers that they could do anything along that theme. But so we brought an artist into Muneer that year who um, actually found old picture frames and they had the students do their artwork on picture frames. Um, and then we put vellum in the picture frames and they built this black box. It was like these artists were amazing, but, um, and the students' artwork was amazing, but they, they installed the frames over like a black box that had holes cut out with light shining out. And there was a poem called I Am the Frame. And it's, it was a beautiful poem about, you know, you're trying to like ask me this question, and, but like I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, or like define you a certain way, but like I can define myself, like I'm the frame. And I'll, I'll announce who I am. And they did all their artwork on the frames. And so the students at Catherine Cook actually did plaster um, face masks of themselves and then did artwork on that. Um, the students that year from Franklin did sculptures about facing their fears. So it wasn't... So each school did something different. Right, they did something different. So um, Immaculate Conception actually did self-portraits, like drawings, but everyone did something along that theme of like the people, like who we are in our neighborhood. Um, yeah. And then you ended up having a showing? Yes, yeah, so we had a show here, and that was before it was renovated. It was before we even had um, the space, but the building let us, gave us permission to use this space and the community center. We had hundreds of people. Um, Family and friends. Yeah, everybody, like the people from uh, Marshfield Gardens came, the surrounding neighbors came. Um, we had food donated by uh, Ranali's. We had, um, you know, it was just, it was a party. You know, I tell you, I came to that, uh, and it was so wonderful to see the parents' mm -hmm. pride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and seeing their kids create something and do something. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was just so beautiful. And it's like all the parents, I mean, everybody. It was wonderful. It was a, it was a, it was a great, great event. Uh, we, I mean, it's hard to get an accurate count, but s some of our volunteers who were counting said, you know, I think you had close to a thousand people um, coming in and out at different times. So I don't know exactly how many, but, you know, I think our, um, you know, our benchmark is there are about 10,000 people here in the neighborhood. And, um, you know, the, the engineers say if you can get 10% of a population deeply committed to an idea, then it takes over, it, um, it always takes over as the dominant, um, that you reach a tipping point and it takes over and you can't stop that, the momentum of that idea. So, I mean, for centuries we've had this idea of separation and distrust of each other and, you know, misinformation and misrepresentation of people um, <coughs> if we get 10% of the neighborhood on board and this is a, a, a manageable size, a doable size, like it's possible. You know, we had almost almost this, the right number of people at our first event. Now that's not making them true believers, but you know, if we can reach enough people with, you know, oh yeah, like I've had enough experience over time with people who I've been sort of, not even consciously, but unconsciously, you know, trained to be scared of, you know, then all of a sudden we can have real change. Yes, because before that, <coughs> A lot of those folks who came over here was their first time. 
-hmm. ever coming, some may be coming on the street, mm -hmm. on the side of the street, and some coming inside this building and co-mingling with folks. And vice versa, it's the first time for the folks who live in this building to co-mingle with someone that's different than, than you know, who, how they are. Right. And uh, so I think that was a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, and I, I think about when you said what you said about the shooting, sound like you didn't have no fear, you know, uh, and how you didn't have any fear of doing, uh, making this program happen, you know, and how you had this dream and this vision, you know, and then I think about your um, Christian uh, education. That's all your faith, right? I see all your faith coming out because with faith, with faith, there's no fear. Right. Mm -hmm. when you have faith. You don't have any fear. You just do what you think is right. And you do what you think God wants you to do. And, you know, he got your back and and he just everything happens from there. Right. So I can I can see your Christian walk in this <laughs> all, all over all of you guys. I see your Christian walk coming out of this. with helping helping people. Uh, so so from that show. That was a show where all the kids were separate, then you brought all the families together. When did you bring all of the kids together? Right, well, so the kids were at that show, but they were sort of a sense of people not knowing how to engage with each other. So the next year, we decided to just hear from the students, have them share their voice. So they still did their art project separately, um, but we had each school pick a couple of students who would go up front at a microphone and talk about their creative process and a little bit about their artwork so the students could begin to hear each other's voices. Um, and then um, in 2017, we invited John Baker's good friend, Cecil McDonald Jr., who's an artist, um, to come do this kite project. And that was where we really wanted to get the kids engaging with each other and creating artwork together. So you took baby steps with it. Right. You didn't just toss everybody together. Right. And and you took baby steps to bring them together. Mm -hmm. So what happened with the art pro project? So we, p we had um, students from Catherine Cook and students from Meneer paired up with each other. They each had a buddy. Sixth and graders, right? Yeah, these were sixth grade students at the time. Now they're in eighth grade. We're about to uh, reconnect them. Um, we had eighth graders at Franklin who had already studied photography who were paired up with adults like you, like community leaders in the neighborhood. Um, and all of these uh, people with their partners um, were brought together to interview each other and just ask each other questions about their lives, which we often don't take time to do. Um, and the questions ranged from, like, what's your favorite subject in school to do you think about death and are you afraid? Um, and what do you dream about? And, and the students, in some cases, like you'd see little tears welling up, or I saw adults misting up as they were telling their stories yes. because you know we, like we're all so busy we don't take the time to really share our stories or like it's not the right professional environment or um, but when you're allowed and given that permission um, you know some really interesting stories came out and I think it feels good to have someone listen too so um, some of the eighth graders who had just gone through the CPS you know high school application process you know they had an adult asking them about you know what their life is like, you know, th that felt really good to them. Um, so after interviewing each other, Cecil taught people the basics of photography and how to photograph each other. They um, partnered up, they photographed their, um, their partner after they got to know them a little bit. And then we printed those images and a line from the interview, um, in most cases about their hopes and dreams for the future on Tyvek. And the students then came together and built kites together. Um, so this is a sample of the kites. Then they gathered on the grassy field of Franklin and um, to hold up the kites and the dreams of their neighbors. Um, Cecil took a, a photograph of that where people are holding up the, the dreams of their neighbors and this beautiful diverse community holding each other's dreams. Then they ran around like crazy and flew the kites. <laughs> and that was the first time we really engaged the students um, in a meaningful way um, together prior to the art show. Um, so in between all that time, mm -hmm. on a, on a per periodic basis, kids just come in here? Right, well, so this was, so during that Kai project was the first time we opened, was when we opened this studio. Prior to that, we had the temporary studio, so we had some classes that were going and some so occasional events. teaching kids classes. Yeah, so we still have, we have classes now. We're actually about to start a new session, um, so people can sign up. Um, we've got uh, 
like some drawing classes. We've had, you know, so there's, uh, those are online on our website. So, and Catherine Cook students, for example, sign up for some of our classes online on their website, and the um, parent, the teachers walk them over. Um, so it's part of their after school programming, but they come here, and then other kids just sign up um, through our website, and they come here and take, you know, to create art together. So Charlie, so do you do all of this by yourself or do you guys be here or do you have other volunteers? You know, how do you, how do this operation operate? All right, so we have one part-time employee, um, Hannah. She is a former art student She's of John's. She's my graduate. Yeah. yeah, so that's how we got Came her in. Education. So, so she teaches classes. Um, we do a monthly adult class a painting class for adults, which is really fun. It's a, um, we call it paint and sip. Um, but so. Paint and um, sip, so they sip some wine? Or Water, other beverage, whatever, or whatever, you <laughs> whatever you enjoy drinking, whatever you enjoy sipping. Um, and then, um, so, but so we have a series of volunteers. So John often comes and helps with things. Um, he doesn't live really close, so it's harder for him. Um, we get, we do get volunteers, but we only have one part-time employee, and that's Hannah. So you, you offer your programs here to anybody mm -hmm. in the neighborhood that yes. want to come. Mm -hmm. That's good. So we not should. only just for the young people, but for the adults also. Right. And so tomorrow, for example, we've got this huge, like a whole day of free programming. We're partnering with Art Design Chicago. Okay. But so things like that. But, like, but we do like a series of, we'll do a series of workshops, free workshops on Saturdays where families are welcome. Okay. So. We should also talk about uh, what we did this summer. Um, oh, right. Uh, we, had a, we got a grant from After School Matters, and I teach figure drawing at, uh, at Trinity, so I taught the kids um, how, to do, uh, how to do the figure, and um, part of it was to teach them how to do that so that they could represent themselves, because as you know, representation and being able to control how you're represented is a really significant thing, so that it's not somebody else who's telling who you are, you tell who you are. But in addition to that, uh, um, one of the things that Charlie and I did was we went to the Old Town uh, Merchants Association back in April and talked to them about uh, letting our kids draw their portraits on the windows of uh, their businesses. So uh, once we once I had them uh, do the figure, then what we would do is, uh, on the windows over there, they would practice uh, drawing each other with dry erase markers. And once they got confident, we went out to the neighborhood and uh, we did a bunch of people at Wintrust Bank. We did Rachel at uh, Zanies. We, we did, did. We did Chef Dino. We did Chef Dino. Did Dino. Dino. Yeah, so uh, he stood in the window and one of the right. students drew him. <laughs> you know, it was great. Um, and, and, we, we still need to do the next step on that. We need to go talk to Chef Dino and say, you know what, our kids are really great kids and you should hire a couple of them. Fantastic. That's the next, that's kind of the next step. Um, that's good, and Dino live right down the street. That's a good thing about those merchants, they live in the neighborhood too, mm -hmm. yeah. which is good. That's yeah. great. Uh, and, and I know that the Old Town Merchants and Residents uh, made a contribution to you all. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, times. several times, yeah, yeah, we support you. And they also have us uh, run the Well Street Art Festival Kids and Family See. Tent, and they pay us for that, so that really helps us as well. That's great, so, so they're supporting you, which is fantastic, and they offer the money that they make at the festival, they give some back to the neighborhood. Yes. That's good, that's good. Uh, so, um, so when is your next event, and what do you have going on? Well, we've got new classes for um, kids happening all the time. Every month we have the painting class for adults. Okay. And we've got, in January we'll have, you know, our regular series of classes. Um, in the spring, we'll, we're, um, this spring we're going to be doing another kite project with Cecil. So that will be starting up, um, you know, shortly after winter break. And then mm -hmm. we'll have another art show in the spring and another kite project. So how do young people get involved? So How, what do they do? For the most part, they sign up for one of our classes that's online. Does it cost them? Do it cost them anything? So it's an honor system. There's like a suggested price. If you can't afford it, you don't have to pay it. So because I know uh, materials and it, materials cost money, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have probably a little less than half of the students who pay something to mm -hmm. be in the classes, and the other kids come for free, and we raise money to cover that. Do that's the just job. 
<laughs> Do LaSalle Street Church support you too? They gave us a donation from their loaves and fishes from the, in the like, very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some individual members of the church who have supported us. Fantastic. So, so you know, Charlie, so you moved over here, related, rented this to you, mm -hmm. right? And they also, Related has been extremely generous. They did all the, we raised money to do the renovations of this property. They did it all, this space, and they did it all for us. Oh, you know what? Um, what this was summer of 2016. So there was this just amazing exhibition by Kerry James Marshall, one of the most important artists working today at the Museum of Contemporary Art. Mm -hmm. and. Um, he's African American, and uh, I think I went to see that. Yeah, and so I had been to see it, and we were having a board meeting, and I said to the board members, you know, you know, I'll, you know, I'll lead a tour, and I yeah. thought we'll get, you know, like ten or twelve board members, um, and Adele was there. Adele was there. So Adele is the president of Marshallfield Garden Apartments. Right, and right. she's also a board uh, member uh, of Art uh, on Sedgwick. Okay, right. fantastic. Of right. the residents that live mm -hmm. in the building, and. I'm not sure who got the bus. Related. Related got the bus. Related gave us a bus, and there were about 40 people. Mm -hmm. So I led a tour of these 40 people, and there were, for like half of them, they had never been to an art museum before. Yeah, and John actually asked them on the way over, "How many people have never been to an art museum before?" And half of them raised their hands. And it, for me, you know, to uh, lead a group of African Americans who had never been to a museum before and show them Carrie James Marshall's work. I mean, that's the first stuff they saw. Because what happened to Marshall was, when he was a little kid, he went to the LA County Art Museum and he looked around and he said, how come nobody looks like me? Hmm. And he said, I'm changing that. And, um, and Marshall's work is, is brilliant in all kinds of ways that uh, artists and art historians know. And it was just really great to be able to show people, like, you know, here's, here's what he's doing. I, put together a little brochure so that they could see the art historical references that he was making and um, a lot of a lot of African Americans who know about art went to see that display. That's right. Yeah, it's a fantastic display. That's and right. there was a nice little collage area there too and the kids um, we brought postcards for the kids to send postcards to Carrie James Marshall and they drew <laughs> on them and sent them to them and that was really nice. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So so you come here, you move over here, relate it let you use the space. Mm -hmm. Then related, um, figure that they don't have a, uh, they need a new director. Right, of their community center. Of their community center, mm -hmm. which deals with all of the kids in this building, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and which, which a challenge uh, is in this building, and in this community, there's so many lines in this neighborhood that divides the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. There's Cedric Street, right, rich and poor, then there's Division Street, right. right, that divides our community with folks who belong to, you know, years ago when we were little kids, there used to be one gang and another gang over here. So a lot of these young folks won't go across the street to the park or get involved, all those things. Mm -hmm. So what they end up doing is just standing around the community or playing in the back in their um, the courtyard. Court, courtyard, right? Mm -hmm. Where we later built up the courtyard and made it real nice so that, you know, kids can play as riot swings and all that stuff in there and benches and a lot of things for kids to hang out in. But they also rehabbed the uh, community center. Right. And they needed a director to program it. Mm -hmm. And so how did they come to you, Charlie? How did that happen with you? They came to me with the job description and said, do you know anybody that you would enjoy working with? because um, we'd like them to work with you. And I, um, I, you know, at this point I'd been volunteering, like doing this work for four years. And so you, you, you just, t you go from banking to like. <laughs> <laughs> right, to like zero income. <laughs> no, no, I was like, I, I was like, no, I have a negative. People would ask me my income, I was like, well, it's a negative. Cause like, I'm donating, so like, to make it happen. Um, so, uh, and you know, at the time my husband wasn't working, so, I, I'm looking at this job description and I'm saying, well, um, I'm doing about 80% of this. If you'd be open to me doing, um, using some of my time to keep running Art on Sedgwick and then also doing this, I could do both and that would make Art on Sedgwick more sustainable and you would get sort of the benefit of the arts programming that we can bring to the community. Um, and so they thought that was a good idea. Fantastic, so now 
Ardo, Ardo and Cedric is connected to the community center. Well, yeah, I mean, we're definitely collaborating. So Art and Surgery is still a, a separate nonprofit organization, but we are bringing, you know, we're supporting each other. And how many young people you think it is in this building? I mean, if there are over 2,000 people who live in this building, 2,000 children who live in this 2, building. 2,000 children. Right. See, and I don't think a lot of folks in the neighborhood could imagine that it's that many children living in this building. You know, right. they see a few outside, yeah, well. right, and they think that there's mm -hmm. but they're mostly it's two thousand kids right. in mm -hmm. this building that's not hanging out outside. So Absolutely. the majority of the kids don't hang out outside. Um, mm -hmm. Their parents won't allow them to. They like them where they can see them at. And they're also very scheduled. Most of them are in programs. There are a lot of really wonderful yeah. programs for youth in the neighborhood. They're, That's right. You know, and Bad the Hand Club. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And the, the Fourth Presbyterian has the um, tutoring. Tutoring program. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, and Jesse White tumbling. A lot of kids love to do the tumbling. We might start something in the community center for the smaller kids. Um, so, but the kids are very scheduled and they're very busy. And they're like the Raiders football team. They're there, there are kids team. involved in a lot of things, so it's not like very many of them hang like, around. Like the, the few kids, the around. few kids that people might see. Oh, look at all those kids hanging out. They're, that's like a usually they don't. Ha most of them don't even live over here. Right. They, right. Exactly. They used to, and they come back. Right. Right, and that's part of the education I think we need to do as a community. It's like, well, to really understand, you know you can't really blame someone for not understanding something they haven't been exposed that's to. That's right. So it's just a matter of getting to know what. What, so so I, remember, like. I remember seeing you and your husband walking down the street years ago. Do you remember that? You remember meeting me walking down the street years which, ago? Well, I'm sh I remember running into you in lots of places, so I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure I know which specific instance you're speaking of. And we were just talking, and I was just saying that, you know, there's a lot of kids in this neighborhood and in this building, and folks mm -hmm. need to get to know them, and, you know, all of those things, because, uh, you know, a lot of folks have these notions and mm -hmm. these kids are just kids, just like everybody else, you know? And, um, you know, they just kids, right? You know, they just want to grow up and be grown one day like everybody else. But right now they want to have fun mm -hmm. and play and, you know, and do all the things that kids do. So I, um, you know, I get the pleasure of seeing you downstairs with the kids mm -hmm. <laughs> at the community center and, and uh, and that's uh, it's fun uh, to see them. I mean, you know, the funny thing is, although they all live in this building, they all don't know each other. Absolutely. There's 2,000 of them in this building. They don't even know each other. All of them know each other in the building. And you're bringing them together in the building, but then you're also bringing other people from outside the building mm -hmm. here with them. So, uh, guys, uh, we got a few minutes to go. I want to thank you all very much for uh, joining us on the show. Um, so I know, Jeff, you probably want folks to know how they can donate to this organization uh, if they want to donate, <laughs> being the chairman of the board. I think, I think the most important people, things people can do is kind of go on artonsedgwick.org, understand who we are, what we do. Um, we're always open to volunteers and always open to donations. So. Feel free to log on to our website, look at our Instagram, and get to know who we are, and we're always available. Mm -hmm. And there is a donate button on our mm -hmm. website, and we also have a fundraiser coming up at the end of February at the Sono Chicago, which is right here in the neighborhood, um, Kim McBride. Um, Sono, Sono. The, the Sono Chicago, it's the, better, it's the um, inn on Cleveland. Oh, okay. Um, so she, this is the second year she's done it, so that will yeah, be, yeah, yeah. be really mm -hmm. fun. I was at that one last time. Right, that's yeah, you said you could only place. stay for a minute and you stayed yeah. the whole time. That's Cause right. Because you had so much fun. It's right, it's good people there, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. And, um, and what other kind of, before we go, what other creative things you got coming up, do you have coming up uh, here with the kids? Well, there's going to be Cecil and the Kite Project. Uh, I think I'm going to be teaching another uh, drawing uh, uh, course in the summer, and that's after, after school, school matters. after school matters. So kids get paid to make art, which is they get paid. They get paid. Get out of here. How old, you, how old do you? I have wish to I, I wish that. I, what uh, about what if your kid at heart? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that's it's a it's a really great program. You should come and model for them so they can draw you. <laughs> they can yes. draw me, right? Yeah, you, <laughs> they can draw you. That'd be really great. That'd be, <laughs> yeah, okay. All you got to do is just sit. It's, just sit there for a minute. Just sit for a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's right. So we're also partnering with Looking Glass Theater. Oh, great. And um, they are coming in to help us reconnect some of the students who were involved in the Kite Project two years ago to give them just another chance to interact and reflect on the experience. Because it's one thing to sort of you know, that's just a, such a short period of time and you're not gonna it's not gonna change your life to interact with someone a few times but if you have another opportunity a few more opportunities to reconnect um, they're they're also going to help us out with the next uh, kite project perhaps um, to like get those same kids who are involved like interacting in a more um, storytelling way um, another thing that we would really love to do John Baker has done several of these portrait projects which is um, <coughs> photograph back here where um, you sort of get the community engaged by giving getting them to give you a fo their favorite photograph of them and John um, it. paints it yeah. paints a portrait of them in the past like you know only the wealthy people got to have a portrait and one of John's um, uh, one of his passions is to like to um, through his art like really claim the human dignity of every person that he paints so it's nice to have like the everyday person um, have their portrait painted for me it takes I don't know two or three hours to paint a portrait of you but it also, it, it doesn't take any less time to paint someone who's homeless on the street. And it's a way of saying that all of us uh, have our own place before God. Um, we're all made in God's image. So. Praise God, praise God. You know, um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, you talked about, like, the spiritual dimension of our work. And I think we're, like, I mean, not everyone is, like, of the same faith on our board, but I think everyone has that sort of, um, sort of, under, like spiritual understanding of the dignity of all people and it's in, reflected in our um, logo so it's actually like if you notice the letters in our logo they're all um, shiny and they're all different colors and different shapes but like in like the letters that make up art but um, that was really one of the messages we were trying to um, to communicate through even like the how our organization looks on paper well praise God well you know um, well I, again I want to commend all of you all God bless you guys I pray that one day you go from a negative uh, income to a positive, <laughs> to a positive one day. Um, I hope that people see this show and, and want to uh, contribute. Um, Charlie, uh, so tell us, what are the hours here and what do the kids have to do to get involved? Right, well the most important thing to do, because we don't always have the same hours, is to check our website, it's artonsedgwick.org, and our Facebook page and Instagram, that's where most of our events are advertised and promoted, um, so uh, the most up-to-date information is there, and they can go online and s sign up. We have an Eventbrite page, and that's where all of our registrations are. All right, fantastic. Jeff, we're getting ready to sign off, man. You want to give us a, 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 <laughs> poem. a poem? Give us a little poem yeah. before we sign off, I don't know man. if I have anything off the top of the Come head on, right man. now. You're an artist, man. You can, you can. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, I've often heard the phrase that if the universe gives me a gift and I don't use it, it'll more than likely be taken away. And I don't need to sit around a group of people who have the same addiction as me and admit that I have a problem. So that's a little bit of a little glimpse of what I can do. All right, yeah. good deal, good deal. Yeah. <laughs> when I want to say a hello to Dartrell and LeVay and James and who am I missing <laughs> from the summer? <laughs> Kids who are here from the summer. Um, well, I miss them. All right, good deal, good deal. And that's a good thing. You get to, right, you get, you get other family members, that's right, yeah. from that's being right. involved. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful right. thing. Well, guys, I want to thank you all for watching Network 27. I want to wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Kwanzaa, all of those things, you know, just uh, happy, happy loving each other and enjoying each other. Um, and again, uh, thank you for watching. I hope that you all have seen something here that you can get in involved with. This is an organization that's trying to bring people together. We need to break down our barriers and get out of our comfort level and get to know each other so that we can grow. The more you know, the more you grow, okay? God bless you all. I want to thank my guests, Charlie Brandon, Jeff, Dagbo, Dagbo, Dagbo and John Baker. Okay, I want to thank all of them from Art on, Seven, Art on Cedric uh, for coming on to the show and giving us the opportunity to see what they're doing. 
Thank you all very much for watching Network 27. I'm Alderman Walter Burnett signing off, and I'll see you next month. Thank you.